Welcome to episode 7 of Paradise Killer. We're in the Syndicate headquarters today, and this is a place that I didn't go until very late in my first playthrough. We're here quite early this time, which is going to give us some stuff that I didn't get until much later, pretty early on. But first let's talk about the basic structure of Syndicate headquarters. This is by far the most complicated and uh, confusing area in the game, and there are a few reasons for that. There's a lot of different paths that go basically the same direction. For example, this path here versus this path here. They both go the same place, but they're different paths. There's also a lot of height differential. There are islands that go up or down. There's a lot of stairs that go on for a very long way. There's also height differential that's not about walking. For example, these railings still block your vision, and so do these plants. This kind of, of layout makes it extraordinarily confusing to try and figure out where you've been and where you're going. One more quick little thing they did is they use basically the same color for everything. The ground, the stairs, the railings, they're all pretty close to the same color and the same tone. This makes it very hard to tell where you are based on the material of the, the ground around you. There's no sandy area, for example. There are differences in material, but they're fairly subtle and your brain is not trained to pick up on that kind of detail. Um, at least my brain isn't. It's more along the lines of things like, oh, well, this place is made out of gold or something. Because of that, all of these things combine to make this area very confusing. There's a lot of different ways to go where you're trying to get to, and there's a lot of stuff in the way that you can't see through. These things combine to make this place just a total maze. So uh, if you can't tell by the way that I'm wandering around it, it's, it's extremely difficult to move around in this area because you don't know where you've been and you don't know where you're going. Now in this case, we're, getting, we're running around the side of the, um, of the central pink building, the eye-catching pink building. That building uh, has this whole structure beneath it like this, uh, which I think is great. It looks beautiful, but it just adds to the complexity of the zone. So it's, it's one of those things where, what are you going to do? Are you going to uh, figure out how headquarters is laid out? Good luck! This is where we have to place all of these red pieces. The rewards for doing these are very small. In this case, I believe it's two blood crystals. There's no lore or anything. And the blood crystals are hilariously hard. To, I mean, the, um, the red gems are hilariously hard to get, which we'll talk about later. Now you can see we are getting different kinds of plants in these areas, and that's eventually how I started to figure out which zone I was in. I paid attention to the plants, because to me it was very difficult to tell what was going on. Let's duck. Ah, there's no need to duck, just walk over. Another red crest. As I was saying, they go over here. You need a lot of them, like nine, some, some large number. Here we've got an elevator. Now this is the elevator I was going to come up. I was going to show you how to come up this elevator. If we look downstairs a little bit, you can see how it just goes out into the ocean. There's a big yacht, there's a jet ski. All of those places are things we're definitely going to visit, but I think today, this episode, is just going to be up here in the Syndicate headquarters. We can see that there are a few places we can look. There are, are a few little nooks, and if you're not exploring carefully, you're not going to find them. But the problem is, even if you think you're exploring carefully, you might not be. It's very easy to get turned around. And by problem, I mean it's kind of the point. Hmm, found some vampiric murder attack uh, notes. Now, I believe that there's another thing to find in here, but apparently it doesn't spawn until you know it exists. That's uh, kind of interesting. Ooh, we'll come back to this later. I don't like this. So the this is just a, a side quest. Sure. There's a vampire on the beach, or a dead guy on the beach who was killed by a vampire and he'd like to know what happened. There's tons of statues in this area. They're not all of gods. Um, these, for example, are um, uh, Mesopotamian, I think. They're, they're, they're not gods in, in this game. In this game, they are uh, just soldiers, uh, guardians. I found that one because it was hissing. So here we've got another god, Lost Pain. 
and he's the one who's sucking down the moon, but that never seems to come up in the game. If it does, I don't, don't remember it. But you can see that even though I had just been through that area, and was in fact going through the area in this direction, I still didn't find either that god statue or that red um, gem. That's how challenging it is to figure out where things are in this location. And uh, that makes this area unusually dense and difficult to deal with. Here's Enchanted Blue, a scholar of different galactic races and a connoisseur of food and wine. She remains imprisoned in the real world. So this goddess has a little bit to do with this game because there is a follower of Enchanted Blue causing some issues. We'll talk about that when it comes up. Now that one I would have missed because I was busy being distracted. I was going after the other one. Come on. There we are. Alright, so let's grab this blood crystal. Another god. Damned Harmony. Oh, this is the one that screwed us over. Yep. Damned Harmony screwed us over shortly after the God Hunters came around, so I'm wondering if there was supposed to be any connection between them. This elevator goes upstairs. We'll deal with that later. Um, I'm not in the mood for it right now. I, have a, I, I don't know how long we want to spend in this area. So here's Blood Dancer, who gifted technology to many races, and she has no interest in ethics and causes genocides for experiments. So she's a runaway science lady. She should be our patron saint in this in this game. Um, there were a couple of other places that I wanted to show you. Have I shown you? Ah. There is uh, this, which is a fissure in the galaxy. These paintings are, as far as I can tell, they don't do anything. They're just there for you to find so you can look at them. But the problem is that paintings of deep space, or pictures of deep space that have been red filtered, um, they're not nearly as interesting as other subjects that this game has. So it's a little bit of a challenge for me to really get into them. Uh, and you'll see that later once we start buying background images and they're all basically the same. And I say that as a huge space fanboy. So we can't get through this door. This is where I actually stopped our video last time. Here's the foot bath. See? What's in here? We need everything. We are, we are missing so many things to get in there. Um, and what's in there is poop, but we'll talk about that much, much later. Climb up to the top and grab ourselves a little red gem. And I think there might be a little toy. No, no toys. Oh, having double jump is so nice. Over here on the footbath, we can now reach the top of the footbath. For a long time, I thought there would be something up there, but it is in fact over here where there's something. See that? Another red gem. And you might be thinking, these red gems aren't too bad. <laughs> these are the easy ones. Now we can see, as we look down here, you can see even, even from a vantage point above it, it's still very difficult to see what's going on, which directions go which places. We can't see very far because even when we're at a distance, there are these huge eye breaks, these huge, these huge vision blockers. We can't tell that that direction is uh, is where everything is because we can't see that direction. Uh, and when we're down here, we can't really see it either. So in addition to being convoluted on the ground, it is also convoluted in terms of what you can see when you're trying to move around. Um, you know, you can't get your eye on any distant uh, landmarks because they're hidden. There's stuff in the way. Let's talk to the architect. Then we'll figure out where we want to go from here. Montserrat. Now we're going to rewind to the exile trial. Um, I forgot this happened. That's fine, though. Montserrat says, The crime you committed is severe. Your actions could have indicated this indi <laughs> indicated the syndicate. You let yourself be deceived by damned harmony. I cannot believe you let this happen. It breaks my heart. You served us so well and for so long. You have anything to say? I don't think anything I say will matter. You're unrepentant. Just realistic. You're not interested in the circumstances as long as you get your theatrics. You are the head of the Paradise Psycho Unit. You were supposed to protect us against these dangers. You failed us. Your sentence is exile. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Oh, uh, here's one of those guards that's been uppity about us. Halt. What do you want, freak? I don't like this. Don't test me. So the guards are super, super loyal to Akiko. I didn't actually get that the first time I played through until much, much later because I didn't come up here. We'll talk a little bit more about that after we've gone through Carmelina's bits. I love the designs of these characters. Sometimes the drawings are a little bit rough, but the designs are excellent. Um, in this case, I wanted to draw attention to not only the curve of the body, uh, you know, forming the kind of snake-like curve, which is definitely on purpose, but also the way that her arms are popped up. That's a wonderful way to do both a cobra style, you know, fanning neck fold, and also just to give her some really, really nice timber. She's she's tilted and flows just right. I think it's a wonderfully kinetic image. Um, it might be one of my favorites in the entire game. Uh, and she also has a dog. The investigator is... Carmelina, architect of the island sequences. Born to Romeo and Natasha Silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was actually born on the fourth island sequence. I forgot that. She didn't make the first few islands. Uh, someone else did. Her parents were skilled island architects. They did, apparently. Taught her, taught her to weave psychic will into structure. Carmelina has since become a genius architect and will soon achieve the perfect island. Romeo Silence was seduced by the god Cosmic Deceit and committed treason. Yeah. As a part of his punishment, no member of the Silence family would ever be allowed on the council, including Carmelina. Her mother was killed fighting to protect the council during the demonic invasion on the Ninth Island sequence. The investigation freak. Exile wasn't per permanent for the investigation freak or her little computer. The investigator is here. If the syndicate needs me, I answer. What? This is the worst crime in our history. Leader Montserrat and the entire council have been taken from us. Losing Montserrat to an act of savagery is a loss to all of us in the Syndicate and will be a struggle to overcome. <laughs> it worked out okay for you. You got the throne. Do your job. A temporary measure ordered by your new master. She's talking about Judge. A new council will be assembled on the next island. That's strange. Why did Judge choose you to be we leader? We Craft is its own reward. So I don't know if you can hear, but she's got... Um, she got an accent, a South American accent of some kind, and I can't do one, so you won't be hearing me try and pretend to be a you know, South American accent when I'm talking for her. I don't like this. So she's basically being uh, very self-effacing. She's she's pretending like, oh, I'm just doing my job, you know. Um, maybe I'll give her a Minnesota accent. I can do that one. We have achieved perfection. The next island will be perfect, and I'm the architect. I will see us to the new island and then step aside. So she's saying that Judge chose her because she's the person that actually built the next island and she knows what's going on. She'll definitely take everyone to the next island, so there's no big worry about that. How dare you! The leader cannot overturn the law without unanimous council backing. The marshals work for the council, not the leader. Uh, they actually don't. They work for Akiko. Craft is its own reward. And that's actually an important point when I say that. I'm not just being, like, snarky. The fact that they work for Akiko is why everybody is doing what they're doing up here in he corporate headquarters. Because if they work for Akiko, then if Akiko says that, you know, Carmelina should stay king, well, Carmelina gets to stay king, doesn't she? Mm, but you probably don't realize that the first time you talk to her, unless you're me. Because I didn't talk to her until 10 hours into the game. And I already had figured everything out. Uh, which isn't like, oh, I'm so smart. No, I mean, after 10 hours, you basically have it down. I'm an artist, a craftswoman. I have no desire to manage and administrate. What? I hope you can close this incident quickly. The island wants to die. Perfect 25 is coming, and the murderer is in custody. Crime cannot do your job. Believe what you want. Can I help you with anything? So now this is the first time we've gotten to converse with someone like this. Um, this game has a couple of different menu options, and one of them is always hang out. You can hang out with anybody, uh, even people who hate you. Can I ask you something, Architect? What's your dog's name? Platinum? Uh, when did you get it? This island a few years ago. During an abduction operation, a stray followed the marshals back. And this is uh, not just to tell you that her cute dog exists. 
is also to let you know she's in pretty tight with the marshals. When the marshals brought back a random dog, they gave it to the architect. Just like that was their first instinct. Hmm. I never had never had you done as a dog person. I thought you'd be more into cats. I wanted a companion that doesn't talk. Cats are fine, but I see too much of myself in them. <laughs> Can I pet him? If you must. Who's a good boy? Can you help me sniff out the murderer? Can I help you with anything? And you notice that we get a relationship increase. Once you increase the relationship for these various characters enough by hanging out with them enough, they'll give you clues. You do not, as far as I know, you do not need these clues absolutely, but they do help quite a bit. Uh, and the idea is that this is a good gating mechanism. You can explore the island at whatever pace you want, but you're going to quickly realize that you should do sweeps, talk to people, hang out with them, because these hangouts are timed, so you have to come back in an hour or whatever. Because of that, there's no reason to just explore the island. You'd be better off dropping in on people while you do. Crime cannot hide. This is nonsense. So, like everybody on this island, Carmelina is at least pretending to buy into Red Herring's guilt. This is nonsense. <gasps> we have achieved perfect craft is its own reward. What do you know of the crime? Only what I was told by the Grand Marshal. Henry broke free and murdered the council. How would a citizen, why would a citizen have enough motive and the ability to kill the council, breaching all of the Holy Seals? I don't know. Sure. Do your job. You're a disgrace. Finish this quickly and maybe the next council will look favorably on you. Uh, yeah, yeah. The next council will, but I don't think you'll be there to see it, Snake Lady. What do you know about K Hex? It's a mystery. I do hope nothing bad has happened to him. When did you last see him? A couple of weeks ago. My schedule became hectic. Where? Where were you last night? Visiting witness. His role is to oversee the end of an island. The last moments are best enjoyed with an old friend. So this is actually a very important alibi um, for a lot of reasons. In terms of detective work, the fact that she was with Witness is a rock-solid alibi that you have to break, and it's really interesting how you end up breaking it, um, and it's quite zany. Uh, Witness himself, calling him an old friend is an interesting uh, way to put it, because they're not old friends. They're old lovers, and they don't like each other now. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Sure. It is cowardly to insinuate, investigator. Got it. Yeah, so she really did sure. stay with him basically the whole the whole time. Um and uh, we have to figure out how she got around that. Of course, she's not special like that. I'm not I'm not saying that she's the guilty party. I'm saying that everybody is like that. If someone has an alibi, it's it's definitely fake. <laughs> it's definitely something you've got to crack. That's the nature of this game. Uh, yep, good, good, good. Everything's ready to rumble. Now the question I have for me... It's been 18 minutes. That's plenty of time. Let's go ahead and stop here. Um, and next time we'll come back up. We'll still be in this area, but we'll be just doing a couple of, you know, detail things. <laughs>